Our lesson for today is all about finding roots of a quadratic equation by factoring. Quadratic equations are also known as second degree equations because the highest power of the variable is 2. They may have 0, 1, or 2 solutions. There are several methods for solving them. This lesson involves those that can be solved by factoring. So now we have here, so to factor is to write an expression as a product. So let's have an example. So we have here 6x squared. So when we get the factors of 6x squared, we got 2 times 3 times x times x. Next, we have here 4x squared minus 3x. So the factors of it are x times 4x minus 3. And the last one is the x squared plus 3x plus 2. The factors of it are x plus 2 times x plus 1. So we have here a question. So what does it mean to factor? So to factor means... Okay, to write an expression as a product. We have also here which quadratic trinomial is factored. So we have here first 6x squared plus 7x minus 3 or 3x minus 1 times 2x plus 3. What do we think? So the answer is 3x minus 1 times 2x plus 3. Remember, the opposite of factoring a quadratic polynomial is multiplying binomials. So, like this. So, we have here x plus 2 times x plus 1 is equal to x squared plus 3x plus 2. When finding roots of a quadratic equation by factoring, we have here a rule. So, this is called zero product rule, which states that if a, b is equal to zero, then either a is equal to zero or b is equal to zero. To apply this rule to solving a quadratic equation, we first must ensure that the equation is in the standard form of ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero and a should not equal to zero. Then determine whether the expression on the left side of the equation can be factor. If so, then the product of those factors is 0. And since the factor 1 times factor 2 is equal to 0, then either factor 1 is equal to 0 or factor 2 is equal to 0. We have here the steps in solving a quadratic equation by factoring. So first is to write the equation in standard form. So our standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. That is with all terms on one side of the equal sign is descending power of the variable and 0 on the other side. So next step we have here factor completely then step three use the zero factor property to set each factor with variable equal to zero and solve the resulting equation and the last one is to check check each solution in the original equation for better understanding let's have an example so we have here solving by factoring which is in general quadratic trinomial so we have here x squared minus 6y plus 5 is equal to 0 so let's have the step 1 which is to write the equation in standard form so to write it we have here y squared minus 6y plus 5 is equal to 0. So let's have the second step, which is to factor completely. Can we factor the expression on the left side of the equation? Yes, we can express it as the product of two polynomial factors. So when we get the factors of it, it becomes y minus 5 times y minus 1 is equal to 
zero. Since the product of those two factors is zero, then according to the zero product rule, one of the factors must be equal to zero. So let's have the another step, which is to use the factor or the zero factor property. Now it becomes y minus 5 is equal to 0 or y minus 1 is equal to 0. So, we set up each of the factors to 0 and solve to determine the two possible solutions. So, we will just transpose the negative 5 to the right side which become y is equal to 5. Then next is the y minus 1. Let's transpose the negative 1 to the right side and it becomes y is equal to positive 1. So it becomes like this. y is equal to 5 and y is equal to 1. We will know if these two roots are the solution. So let's substitute the 5 first on the original equation. So it becomes like this. So the 5 square minus 6 times 5 plus 5 is equal to 0. So when we square 5, it becomes 25. Then when we multiply 6 to 5, it will become 30. Then just bring down positive 5 and equate it with 0. So next, let's simplify the equation. So 25 minus 30 is equal to negative 5. Then just bring down again the positive 5 and equate it with 0. Then negative 5 plus 5 is equal to 0. Then when we simplify negative 5 plus 5, it will become 0. So our first root is correct. Now let's proceed to the second root which is the 1. So let's substitute the 1 into the original equation again. So it will become like this. So we will have now the 1 is square minus 6 times 1 plus 5 is equal to 0. 1 square is equal to 1, then negative 6 times 1 will become negative 6. Then just bring down positive 5 and equate it with 0. 1 minus 6 is equal to negative 5, then just bring down positive 5 and equate it with 0. Then again, simplify the negative 5 plus 5 is equal to 0. So negative 5 plus 5 is equal to 0. Now, let's have another example. So, we have here solved by factoring in common monomial factor, which is 2x squared minus 12x is equal to 0. So, we have here the step 1, which is to write the equation in standard form. So, since our equation is now in the standard form, then let's just rewrite it. So, it becomes 2x squared minus 12x is equal to 0. So, next step is to factor completely. We factor the expression on the right side of the equation. So, we find that we have a common factor of 2x in each of these terms of the expression. So, it will become 2x times x minus 6 is equal to 0. Then, using the zero factor property rule, we set each of the resulting factors equal to 0 and solve to find the two solution. And it will become like this. So we will just equate the two factors to 0. So we have here 2x is equal to 0 or x minus 6 is equal to 0. So next, we will get x is equal to 0 because when we divide 2 on the both sides, it will become x is equal to 0 over 2 or simply 0. Then in x minus 6 is equal to 0, we will just transpose negative 6 on the right side and it will become x is equal to positive 6. Now let's have the last step which is to check if our roots are correct. So by substituting the root on the original equation, we will know if the roots are correct. We have now 2 times 0 is square minus 12 times 0 is equal to 0. So when we square 0, it will become also 0 times 2. The answer is 0 also. Then negative 12 times 0 also 
0. So, 0 minus 0 is equal to 0. So, our first root is correct. Now, let's check the second root. So, we will also substitute 6 on the original equation. And it becomes 2 times 6 squared minus 12 times 6 is equal to 0. So, first, we will square 6 and it will become 36. So, 36 times 2 will give us 72. Then, negative 12 times 6 will be negative 72. Then, equate it with 0. So, now let's simplify. 72 minus 72 will 0. Now, let's have another example. So, we have here, solve by factoring in perfect square trinomial, which is x squared plus 10x plus 25 is equal to 0. Let's have the first step, which is to write the equation in standard form. So, the equation here is in the standard form. So, let's just rewrite it. Now, let's have the second step, which is to factor completely. So, when we have a perfect square trinomial, our roots are the same. So, what do you think are the factors? of x squared plus 10x plus 25 is equal to 0. Okay, so our factors are x plus 5 times x plus 5 is equal to 0. Then after that, we have here use the zero factor property. So we will now equate x plus 5 to 0 and it will become like this. So, x plus 5 is equal to 0 and x plus 5 is equal to 0. After that, we will transpose positive 5 on the right side. So, it will become x is equal to negative 5. And the other factor also is x is equal to negative 5. Now, let's check if the roots are correct. So, it is both negative 5. So, we will just... Substitute negative 5 in the original equation and it will become like this. So we have now negative 5 squared plus 10 times negative 5 plus 25 is equal to 0. So negative 5 squared will become positive 25. Then positive 10 times negative 5 will become negative 50. Then just bring down positive 25 and equate it with 0. So let's simplify. 25 minus 50 is equal to negative 25. Then bring down positive 25 and equate it with 0. 0. Negative 25 plus 25 is equal to 0. So our answer is correct. Now let's have another example. So solve by factoring in difference of 2 squares which is x squared minus 49 is equal to 0. So first step is to write the equation in the standard form. This equation is in the standard form, so we need to determine whether the expression on the right side of the equation can be factored. So, let's proceed to the step 2, which is to factor completely. So, we all know that the factor of x squared minus 49 is x plus 7 times x minus 7 is equal to 0. So, after that, let's have the third step, which is to use the zero-factor property. So, we will just equate the two factors to 0, and it will become like this. So, we have now x plus 7 is equal to 0, or x minus 7 is equal to 0. After that, let's transpose positive 7 into the right side. So, it will become negative 7, and the another factor, let's transpose negative 7 into right side and it will become positive 7. So we have now the roots x is equal to negative 7 and positive 7. So for us to determine whether our roots are correct, then let's have the last step which is to check if our answer or the roots are correct. So we will just substitute again negative 7 into the 
original equation and it will become like this. So we have now negative 7 square minus 49. So negative 7 times negative 7 will give us positive 49. Then just bring down negative 49 and equate it with 0. So 49 minus 49 will give us 0. So our first root is correct. Now, let's have the second root which is positive 7. Then, we will just again substitute positive 7 into the original equation. So we have here 7 square minus 49. So 7 times 7 will give us positive 49 minus 49 and equate it with 0. So 49 minus 49 will also give us 0. So our answer here or the roots here are correct. So that's how to factor different kinds of equation. But we have here another way of factoring equation. So it is called diamond box method. So let's have an example. We have here 3x squared plus 14x plus so we will just draw a diamond first then we have here the step one is to multiply the coefficients of the first and the last terms and now place it to the bottom of the diamond so we will just multiply 3 to 8 and it will become 24 and the second step is to place the coefficient of the middle term in the top of the diamond so our middle term here is 14 so we will just place it on the top of the diamond then the third step is to determine which two numbers multiply to get the bottom number and add to get the top so what do you think are the numbers okay so the two numbers are 12 and 24 because when we add 12 to 2, it will become 14, which is the middle term. And when we multiply 2 to 12, it will become 24, which is in the bottom of the diamond. So next is to complete the box, placing the appropriate terms in their place. So the 3 here is the first term. So we will just write the first term on the first box. The next is the two in the diamond. We will just place it on the second box. Then the 12 in the third box. And the last term which is 8 in the fourth box. We'll just add x to 2 and 12. And now let's have to factor out the GCFs for the columns and rows. So we have here 3x squared and 12x. So what do you think are the greatest common factors? So it says here that x is the GCF of the 3x squared and 2x. The next, what is the GCF of 12x and 8? Okay, so 4 is the GCF of 12x and 8. Now, we will going to think of the other factor to multiply in the x to get 3x squared. So, what do you think is the number? Okay, so we have here 3x because when we multiply 3x to x, we get 3x squared. How about in the 2x? What do you think is the other factor that will be multiplied to x to get 2x? Okay, so 2 is the other factor of 2x. So the variables and numbers that are outside the box will now be factors of 3x squared plus 14x plus 8. So x plus 4 times 3x plus 2 will give us the answer 3x squared plus 14x plus 8. So our factors here are correct. Now let's have more examples. So we have here 3x squared plus 10x plus 8. So we have here the first step. Multiply the coefficients of the first and the last terms and place it in the bottom of the diamond. So... 3 times 8 will be give us 24. Then we have here 
the second step place the coefficient of the middle term in the top of the diamond so our middle term here is 10 then let's have the step 3 which is to determine which two numbers multiply to get the bottom number and add to get the top so what do you think are the two numbers so we have here 6 and 4 because when we add 6 and 4 it will give us 10 then when we multiply 6 and 4 will give us 24 now let's have the step 4 which is to complete the box by placing the appropriate terms in their place so we have the first box which is 3x square the second box which is 6x the third box which is 4x and the fourth box which is 8 now let's proceed to the step 5 which is to factor out the gcfs for the columns and rows so first let's get the gcf of 3x square and 6x and it is 3x how about 4x and 8 what are the or what is the gcf okay so 4 so what do you think we will going to multiply to 3x to get 3x square okay very good so we will multiply x to 3x to get the 3x square how about what will we multiply to 3x to get 6x okay so we will multiply 2 to 3x to get the 6x then let's have the last step which is to write the result and the product of two binomials so now let's check 3x plus 4 times x plus 2 will give us 3x squared plus 6x plus 4 plus 8. So by using the FOIL method, we got this equation. Then now, let's simplify the equation by combining the like terms. So we will get 3x squared plus 10x plus 8. So our answer is correct. Now let's have another example so we have here 2x square plus 9x plus 10 so in the first step we will just multiply the first and the last term so it will give us 20 the next is to place the middle term in the top so it will give us like that then next is to determine which two numbers multiply to get the bottom and add to get the top so the numbers are 4 and 5 because when we add 4 to 5 it will give us 9 and when we multiply 4 to 5 it will give us 20 then now we will place our answer in the box now let's get the GCF of the 2x square and 4x. So the GCF for 2x square and 4x is 2x. How about 5x and 10? Okay, so the GCF is 5. Now, what is the number or variable that we will going to multiply to 2x to get 2x square? Okay, so x will be multiplied to 2x to get the 2x square. How about the 4x? What will be multiplied to 2x to get 4x? Okay, very good. So 2 will be multiplied to 2x to get the 4x. Then let's have the last step which is to write the result and the product of two binomials. So we have now the factors which is 2x plus 5 times x plus 2 so let's multiply it using the foil method which give us 2x square plus 4x plus 5x plus 10 then we will now simplify the equation by combining the like terms and it will give us 2x square plus 9x plus 10 so our factors are correct that's how to use the diamond box method so there are many ways of factoring a equation so any of the methods 
being discussed will do.